Guys, uh, here we are today inside, currently at my house. I thought I would take the time out from studying, um, or I mean start studying, but I thought I'd do a quick video on three three drills to work on indoors when you are bored. So three drills to work on to improve your, your shot game. So what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about head position, club path and release. Okay, so what I mean by that is one of the most common faults I see within short game is people not trusting the club and letting the club do the work, okay? So, I've actually uh, got the dentist at lunchtime today, so I'm just about to, to leave the dentist, unfortunately. But I thought I would take the time out just to give you a few insights into how I practice indoors, okay? So, what do you think of short game, Lexa? Good answer. So guys, this is... This is known as block practice, okay, so we're not hitting we're not hitting different targets, we're just working on technicalities within your swing to improve on that, okay? So I won't divulge into too much detail today, so what I'm gonna focus on is three important drills that I use when I'm practicing my short game and what's helped me over the last few months to actually improve. My scores don't reflect how hard I've practiced over it, but hopefully I'll play a bit more this year and try and get my scores down. So the first one I'm going to talk about, I had, a, I had a lesson a couple of weeks ago and what happened, the guy, the guy that I was teaching, his head moved quite significantly on the, the backswing, okay, and on the downswing and what happens is that moves the low point of the golf club in, in relation to the ground, okay, so if you move your head during the swing, that changes your weight transfer, okay, and your dynamic balance, so if I move my head, that moves too far to the right. It can, it can fluctuate from left to right depending on what head, the position your head moves, okay? So, my first tip for consistent short game, what you need to do is put your head up against, I don't actually think my dad will appreciate this, but um, if you put your head against the wall, okay? So if I take a good backswing and a good follow through, my head has to stay fixed against the, against the, um, the wall, okay? Too many people, it's like a jack-in-the-box effect, so their head stays on a good position and from there they go ba and their head lifts up the way, okay, so our head has to remain in position with the wall, okay. Do it lightly, remember, then just swing, so feel like your head stays there. If you if you, your head remains in a static position, your weight transfer is going to remain the same, it's not going to do too much excessively or too much excessively on the way through. So your head, light, a light pressure on the head, on the wall, and from there, I want your head to gradually turn off the wall, so it'll gradually move itself from the wall as you come in, just into impact, okay? That'll help rotation on the way through. And people that keep the head too still on the wall, that, that inhibits rotation, okay? So I'm going to reduce rotation on the way back and on the way through. So, so let your head rotate off the wall slightly, and that'll help you work on the strikes. Guys, tip two, what I'm going to talk about is club path, okay, so swing path and hand path, okay, so the first thing that I see with poor indiscrepancies within pitching and short game is people work the club round too early, so what I mean by that is they take the club inside too early, what happens there is they thin it and they top it and they can catch it fat because the club's hitting the ground before the golf ball, so what we need to understand, I mean Steve Stricker's a perfect example, he doesn't use a lot of wrist set, Whereas Jason Day is almost all arms, okay, he doesn't use a lot of wrist set um, as well, but you've got other guys that use quite a lot of wrist set, okay. I can't think of any players off the top of my head that use a lot of wrist set. There is, there is quite a few guys on tour though, but a lot of people who work the club round too early, that, that's where they get too shallow, okay. When you get a bit too shallow, the club generally bottoms out before and you can create too much loft or too much bounce, okay? So, what you need to feel like you're doing is put your your butt against the wall, so feel like the club stays more in front of you, okay? So if the club goes behind me, I can't see where the club face is positioned, okay? So if I work the club back, feel like that my butt stays against the wall, it doesn't work around the club, okay? And then from there, I can set the club in front of me, and then I'll be able to create that downward angle of attack that I'm, I'm wanting, okay? So too many people that go inside, they don't release the club properly. So you release the, release the club, okay? <coughs> so you need to work the club more in front of you. So feel like you're setting it quite early. And then from there, 
as you set the club, the club almost is slightly outside the hands and as you come back down you're feeling that position. At number three, what we're going to talk about is release, okay? So, the seniors class a couple of weeks ago and we worked on short game. And a couple of the guys, the way they, the way they approached each shot, really, quite a lot of, quite a lot of good golfers, a lot of good shots, okay? But the first thing that I always ask is, Gus, is how would you approach a shot or a short game, okay? Short game shot. So what they would do, as they said, they would try and keep the club face on the target for longer, okay? So what that tends to happen is, okay, the swing's built on an arc, okay? So the, the swing's not a straight line. Because the swing's built on an arc, the club goes, it, it goes inside slightly on the way back, and then it comes back inside on the way through. So, so think of a hula hoop, okay? So the hula hoop's slightly rounded. That's the way the swing arc is approached, okay? So what you need to focus on here is release, okay? So you need to get the club against the wall, okay? So if I don't release the club properly, then I'm going to hit the wall. So the club is not dragged along up the wall. The club is dragged down the wall, okay? So not in that position where it's dragged up the wall. And I want the club to feel like you're dragging, you're dragging the hands inside, okay? A lot of people shank the golf ball, so that horrible... That horrible shot that comes off the neck or the hosel and shoots straight right. This is down to the release, okay? So the release is impaired. So when people shank the golf ball, they have quite a high handle, okay? So they're not actually releasing the club. The club face is open. That's why you're shanking it, so you get quite a high handle. And what happens here is the toe doesn't turn over, okay? So it's almost the club's almost dragged up the wall like that. I'm not just going to touch the wall here because my dad will actually kill me if I put any dents in this. So. You need to feel like that the toe comes off the wall and inside, okay, so not instead of high, we want to keep the club low, okay. So I want to feel like that I'm making contact, so it's called called lock it in your pocket, so, okay, so head cover in the pocket. And I want, my main goal is pretend, pretend the club's a key and then in my pocket it's a lock, okay. So what I'm trying to focus on here is lock the key in my pocket, okay. So I'm trying to get the key, the club, to turn in my pocket, okay. So the, the head cover is the lock and the butt end is the key. So instead of dragging up the wall, where you can create a lot of errors and a lot a of lot, uh, inconsistent club face aims, okay. So don't drag up the wall with high handle and you're most susceptible to shanking, okay. So feel like the club's low and left on the way through. That'll help with the release, okay. So feel like that as you come through the club moves off the wall and inside hands go left hands make contact with the with the, the head cover okay so understand that so three concepts to focus on head position feel like that your head stays still all the way through and gradually moves off the wall second thing feel like that we're setting the club early okay don't, don't drag the handle inside where you get too shallow and you can create a lot of errors but the club more in front yeah that will create a lot more spin as long as you keep a loft in the club, if your angle attack is steep, but if you maintain a loft, then that's where you're going to get a lot of spin. Okay, and then the third one, what we, what we focused on is lock it in your pocket, so feel like the release, the club releases left, okay, in relation to your left pocket. So lock that key of the club in the keyhole in your pocket, which is the head cover, okay. So, three indoor drills to implement within your practice. If you find my tips helpful, subscribe to my channel. Subscri subscription is for free um, and if you want me to discuss any other topics that is hindering your game then comment below and I'll be you as soon as possible and if you find my tips helpful get in touch if you want a, a lesson via Jamie Allen Golf or email me at jamieallen at live.com thank you